G'day, my name's Gavin, and welcome to another brewery series video. This time we're doing Jetty Road's gold winning IPA, Australian International Beer Awards International 2021 gold winning IPA, and I've got the recipe here right for you. Thanks to Sean at Jetty Road. This is a series of videos I do with breweries. We talk a little bit about the brewery, we get one of their recipes, we brew it, and we drink it. That's the best part. I met Sean, the brewer at Jetty Road at Gab's Festival. He came up to me, he'd seen my videos, and we talked, and that's how we got to here. I'd been to Jetty Road already though, I just hadn't met Sean before. A quick talk about the beer, then we'll get into it. This beer here, the Jetty Road IPA, just won gold medal at the Australian International Beer Awards, 2021. Let's get it into the glass. Beautiful straw, light golden. Classic West Coast IPA, El Dorado. I can taste, and there's a few other hops in there. We'll talk about the recipe in a minute. Beautiful looking beer. If you'd like to try one, go to the brewery. And I'm not just saying that, fresh off tap is the best you'll ever get it. It is available at BWS at the moment, in, at least in Victoria. Just check the dates on the can. But otherwise, buy direct from them, go and visit them. This video has taken a little bit longer than I wanted to come out. I wanted to go there and maybe have a brew day and film a lot more footage in the brewery, but due to all the lockdowns, that hasn't been able to happen. I keep think thinking it was gonna happen and then it'd get delayed again. Let's have a quick look at where they're located. The Jetty Road Brewery I visited was at Dramana. It's about an hour's drive south of Melbourne. And they also have another one on the other side. And that's about two hours down on the Great Ocean Road at Lawn. We'll have a quick look at some photos I was going to say I took, I didn't take them the night I was there. My little daughter, who was about five years old at the time, had the camera and took them. They might be a little bit blurry. This is her here, she looks like a wild animal. Besides the photos Holly took, I grabbed some photos off the web because I've been in lockdown and haven't been able to get back out there. I've actually brewed it twice now. The first keg run out weeks ago. I did film a rough tasting. I'll throw that on the end of this video if you want to have a look at that. And the second one's just in the keg now clearing. It hasn't quite cleared. The second one, I didn't have any of the correct yeast left. So I used Verdant, so it's a little bit hazy. I decided to use the G40 for this batch. And I also went with the Grandfather Recipe Builder. I upscaled the size to 25 litre, rather than my normal 23 litre. Since I'm quite new to this system still, I just wanted to make sure I got the amount out that I wanted. You may notice the IBUs look a little bit low there, but they've calculated with a different formula. I'm using the M IBU formula in Grainfather, and it calculates them differently to Tinseth, like you usually see in other programs. You can see there we need around 23 litres for the mash and about 13 litres for the sparge. So it's about 36 litres. I'll make sure I heat up about 40 to 45, so I'll have plenty of water to muck around with. I used the Grainfather's delayed session heating this is simply a timer, so I could fill it up with water the night before and it'd be hot when I came out in the morning. When I came out to the brewery, we were at strike temp. I'd started with about 45 litres of water, so I had to move over 22 litres to the HLT to keep it warm for sparge. As I said earlier, I need about 36 litres all up, but I always heat up more, that way I've got more to play with. And I'm not struggling to get the last little bits out of the HLT. I double check I have my 23 litres. Remember my sight gauge is about a litre out. I add my salts. It's a typical West Coast IPA water profile that's a little bit higher in sulphate. If you're not into your water chemistry but you'd like to start having a little bit of a play and you live at least on the East Coast in Sydney and Melbourne, you could easily add a teaspoon of gypsum to your mash or to your boil and that will help you out in this recipe. Bring out the bitterness and the hops a little bit more. We had a strike temp of about 69 to 70 degrees. That's so when we mash in, we get to about 65 degrees. So I'll bring the grain up on the screen and it's in percentages. That's so you can put it into your software easier. You don't have to be looking at the amounts and you can adjust it for whatever batch size you're doing. So for this batch, I had 5.11 kilo of ale malt. If you can get the Cooper's malt, use that. It's a great malt. Otherwise, any sort of ale malt or pale malt will probably do you. 
I then had 340 grams of Munich malt, 115 grams of Caram Munich 2, and 115 grams of acidulated. We mix it up nice and well and leave it for 60 minutes. If you take pH readings, do that at the 15 minute mark. So it's been about 15 minutes, which is the time I'll take my pH reading, and we'll check the temperature. 65.3, that's fine. I don't know if you can see that or not, but, and if you notice, what I've tried and do is put the recirc arm, so it sort of sits in between the two holes where the holes are. I'm not sure if that makes a difference, but I guess it's better than it just shooting straight through the holes, if you know what I mean. I think. Let's just try and uh, get a reading without burning myself. Now I take about a third of a cup, for those that haven't seen my other videos, and that goes into the freezer for 15 minutes, and then it'll be around the 20 degree mark to take a nice accurate reading. When I've done the reading, I usually put it straight back in. But while we're here, I'm just going to give it a, a stir. Especially we've still got three quarters of the mash to go and mash out. So we've still got an hour's worth of clearing, filtering, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to turn up the pump a bit. I don't know what I'm at, probably about half. Turn up the pump a bit to wash everything down. Level out the grain bed again. We've got a nice flow. I've really got nothing to worry about here. Turn it down a little bit again. And I'll position, try and position it again there. I said this is probably not needed, but I don't want it splashing around too much. I might even just leave that spoon in there. I did take a pH reading, as you saw. But once I'd cooled down the sample, I had an accident. No, I just was going to take my pH reading and I just accidentally caught it on the edge of the glass like that. Bang, smashed it. Oh, well, I don't know what the pH is. Replacement bowls for the beverage doctor are available. It'll be featured in an upcoming video. So I'd mashed in with 23 litres and I'm sparging with about 13 litres. You might notice there the sparge is running a little bit slow and that was because the side holes in the mash pipe actually blocked up for this batch. I hadn't seen it happen before but a little bit of chit and whatever else just sort of blocked the holes up which was kind of good because it made sure that all that sparge water ran through the grain bed instead of going out the sides. All right, I was a little, I was a little tied up then. I was reordering a new bulb for my pH meter. That it's, I can't hear any dripping. So I'm going to go to the next step. And we're already at ninety six point five anyway. Uh, we're ramping with at a hundred percent. We're ninety seven already. That's it. So it's saying, well, it's nearly 29, so that means we've got nearly 30 litres. When I'm using my G40 on 10 amps, it'll say we're at the boil, because we're at 100 degrees, but it's not really boiling. So I don't start the boil timer until I see that wort moving. I'm going to call that a boil. Take a reading. Pre-boil. We're aiming for about 53, so I'm guessing this is going to be 45-ish. So we're 51. We're supposed to be 53 post-boil. Guessing we're two or three points up here. The reason I was guessing my numbers is I wasn't quite sure where to find it in the Grainfather app. I was quite new at the app, and I wasn't sure where you would find the pre-boil reading. Just from my experience, I would guess if I wanted a starting gravity of about 1053, I'd probably want a pre-boil of about 1047, 1048. To get to those numbers at 30 litres, I'd have to add and I could water down by about two litres and that'd get me much closer to my wanted numbers. I'm just gonna march on with this beer at the gravity it comes out at. Start a boil. I'm gonna add five grams of Warrior. 
and I'll bring the hops up on the screen. As I said, 5 gram Warrior for 60 minutes. Then we've got 40 grams each of Mosaic, El Dorado and Equinot. Do about a 10 minute Whirlpool and about a 5 minute steep for that. Should be plenty. I must stress, don't be dropping the temperature of the Whirlpool to 80 degrees or anything like that. The beer just won't have any bitterness. Before the end of the boil, I set my chiller up. Because I'm going to be using the chiller today, I'll use it for the Whirlpool as well. Might as well just have it all there in place. And I just clamp the output of the chiller to the side of the unit so we get a nice whirlpool. All right, that's the end of the boil. Now I'm just going to take this out for a second to let the level so I can see what level we are. The 25, so that means there's 26 litres left. All right, through the chiller. So we whirlpool through the chiller. It's a little bit slower than the usual whirlpool, but not that much. And I throw in my 120 grams worth of hops, 40 grams of each. And you want to whirlpool for about 15 to 20 minutes. So what I do is go half whirlpool and then half steep. And the reason I steep is just so things can settle out a bit before I transfer it to the fermenter. I know how this pump's going to play with me. If it's still going to be all right throwing all those hops in. And as far as those hops go, some of mine, last time I brewed this beer, were a bit old, 2018. I didn't notice till later. And it really lets the beer down in, the, in this last, in dry hopping and even my whirlpooling, I think. So just try and get the freshest hops you can. And if you can't, if the hops you're buying are three years old or something, if you can have a look at the pack before you buy them, buy something else. I mean, it won't be exactly the same beer, of course. But, you know, you could use Simcoe, Citra, anything like that. It's darker. The trouble I have with these fittings at the moment is they're sort of making it like a Mac where because they're sort of different size fittings than normally that are around the brewery, you know, just to retrofit things like my uh, temp, temperature, reader, when we're going into the chiller, all need to be refitted again. Right, now that's been going for about just under 10 minutes, about 10 minutes. I'm going to stop the pump. I'm going to let it settle out. Another 5 to 10 minutes, we'll just see how we go. Alright, that's time. Hasn't settled out as much as usual, I don't think. I, I think the hops have made it a bit murky. Turn the hose on. And once I'm happy, I start chilling it. And just like that, we're done. Well, that's saying 58. So we're about five points high. Now we should water it down here. But I'm just going to run with it. That's okay for an IPA. So we're 24 litres. We're at about 10.57, 10.58. So two litres would get that down to about 10.53. If you want to, you'd want to make sure you got the chlorine out of it, dechlorinate it. Like if I've got water left over in my HLT now, I could use that to water this down two litres. And you'd be, you'd be at your, the gravity you wanted. I didn't film putting the yeast in, but you use Bry 97. It'll drop nice and clear and give some great flavours. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making it to the end. Big thank you to Sean and the crew out there at Jetty Road. I'll get out there as soon as I can. Uh, I might even brew another one of their recipes. They've got a nice red IPA that I might brew. <laughs> we'll see what happens, eh? So support your local breweries. That's what these videos are all about. Education, meeting breweries you might not have heard before. Get out and visit them whenever you can. I try to all the time. I don't get there as much as I like, but I try my hardest. If you like the video, please take the time to click like. It really helps us. Share the video. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed. There's something like 70% of my viewers aren't subscribed. You'll get every video and a notification if you click the bell, if you do. Thanks to my patrons, because without them, these videos couldn't happen. Cheers.
Jenny Road IPA, gold medal, <laughs> international. <laughs> Cheers. G'day. We are in the garage, a little bit of a rushed tasting this one. It's Melbourne Cup Day, the neighbours are out doing lawns and things. You might be able to hear them in the background. Anyway, this is mine over here. I'll give it a top up in a minute. By the time I move the camera out here, set everything up. Lost a bit of hair, but it's crystal clear. It's a little bit hard to see with the um, condensation, but it is crystal clear. And here is a Jetty Road original. Gold winning IPA. I can smell it as soon as you open it. As I always say, just be careful if you buy them from supermarkets. Because they can have a little bit of age to them. So there we go. That's the one I just poured. And that's the one I just poured out of my keg grade. Mine's a touch darker. It really isn't much. The light in here, as you can see, is shining in from one side, is messing things around a little. But uh, if I get in the right light, you can see that they're, they're identical just about, as they should be. <laughs> the same grain and everything. Um, they smell the same <laughs> as they should. So I've mentioned this before in other videos. When people say, oh, your, your clones are close. Well, these they have to be close <laughs> because they're the exact recipe from the brewers in this brewery series. So if it's different, uh, it's probably, you know, the fermenter you used or whatever. You might have subbed out a little bit of different grain or something. But uh, keep trying and you'll get it exactly the same. <sighs> Hoppy, tasty. That's very refreshing. What can I say? As I said, this was going to be a quick review. It's Melbourne Cup Day. I've got things going on, but I have to empty this keg today. <laughs> so, uh, we might do another review, proper review of their beer. Uh, sorry, I was trying to rush things then and a bit of beer went down the wrong way and I was choking to stop the camera. I find theirs is a little bit fresher and I didn't realize until uh, I went to make my second batch and I looked at the age of the hops and they were 2018, I think it was, three years old. I never try to make IPAs with hops that old. But I was in, you know, sometimes when, the, but when I'm doing these recipes, I just try and get the correct ingredients, of course, for the video and I didn't check. And that's why I've got a second batch right now in the keg there. It's just clearing up a little. But anyway, there you go. You can see they're identical. One, this one keeps looking darker for some reason, but it's not. It just must be the way I'm holding it in the light. There you go. I just thought I'd pick up a different camera. My other camera wasn't picking up the color so well, but this one's my one. As you can usually tell, the beers from the kegerators uh, tend to hold their head a little bit better than the ones from the cans. That's, you've seen that in all my sort of comparisons and reviews. But you can see there, they're both, it's, they're identical. The other camera was just playing light games. Cheers. Brew this beer. Gold medal winner, Jetty Road. <sighs> Yum.